Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for January the 24th. Now, Amy, we, uh, we practice something here called SNAC, and um, it's an acronym that stands for uh, Story, Numbers, and Chart. What's your uh, feelings on that? I think it's, it's best to try and keep things pretty simple when you're looking at stocks, and there's really no better way than to just examine the story, which most investors are more focused on, the numbers, balance sheet, and of course, the charts. Well, I think the charts are really the most important. Uh, I find that to be the highest success rate. Also, you know, the story is pretty simple, I think. It's really who is the management of the company? Are these people bringing money in or are they pumping money out? You know, you have two types of management teams out there, some that are real good at inventing, entrepreneurial people that invent things, that bring new cash flow into the company. But then you have other types of management teams where all they really do is just maintain the company and, and, and send money out, like in the form of dividends or stock repurchases. But the numbers are pretty straightforward. I think what you want there is you want to you always want to look for investments where you can potentially double your money within three to five years. I think the numbers have to to, to show that. But let's go ahead and get into the charts here. This is the NASDAQ. You can see here again we got our low on the Christmas Eve. Uh, volume yesterday was somewhat light. Uh, you know, it was lighter than the day before, which was a down day, but we are starting to see that lower moving average flattening out and looking better. Now, if we go to the weekly graph, you can see here that we had a good week last week. Uh, this week so far, we, we still have another day to go, but the volume does look fairly light going into Friday. Uh, the one thing we're going to talk a little bit about today is long-term moving averages such as the 200-day. Now this is a 35-week moving average which equates to 175 days. The rule here is we want to see the index get back above this moving average, this 35-week moving average, for two consecutive weeks. Now we're going to get into a new indicator. Now, you know, I've always said look at everything, question everything. So, Amy, this is the uh, New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline line. I know you've been doing some work on this. Why don't you kind of talk briefly about it? Sure. So there's there's a lot of different indicators that you can follow, but this one is kind of falls into a special category because what it's doing is it's well, it's called the blast off two to one indicator where the advancing stocks over a 10 day span have basically outperformed declining stocks on a two to one average. Right. And so what we have here is you can see the this is a histogram down here showing the daily activities of the advances versus the declines. Now we had substantial declines yesterday, but we did get a blast off because uh, this period of time here, the advancers uh, exceeded the decliners two to one. Now this line here is cumulative. This is a cumulative line and this other line here is the actual index. What you want to see here is as the index makes new highs or is in an uptrend, you want to make sure that the advanced decline line is in an uptrend. Anyway, it's just one additional indicator that we're going to take keep an eye on and always look at. Now here we have the New York Stock Exchange high-low index. This is where we're measuring the number of new highs versus new lows. We got down to a really low reading here right at the end of 18. Now we've somewhat normalized and you can see here that this actually looks somewhat like a blast off as well. So this could be a blast off indicator uh, confirming the advanced decline blast off. This is very rare. Now here are the number of new lows. Uh, yesterday we only had 11 new lows. Yesterday you can see here we're really starting to stabilize under 40 a day. This is very positive. Now here we have our long-term indicator, which is the 10-20 moving averages, 10-month, 20-month. We're really trying to get back above that lower moving average, which I think would be very important. A move to 2700 would be very constructive. Now on the fear greed, uh, we've, we've seen somewhat of a normalization here of fear greed. I would say we're in a neutral zone here after getting into extreme fear and now we're starting to stabilize. So things are looking somewhat normal there. Now one thing I wanted to mention here, now this is the 200-day moving average and you can see here all 
uh, this period here that that at moving average has been in a nice uptrend. It is now flattened out and actually somewhat turning down. Now, Ned Johnson, who was the founder of Fidelity Funds, was asked if he was on a desert island, what indicator would he want to use? And he said the 200-day moving average. It is a very important moving average. So if we look at history, and we're going to take a look at a, a bullish case and a bearish case. Now, as of last Friday, we were 4% below the 200-day moving average. Now, the way the pattern seems to work is you get your initial drop, and then you retest with a lower low. Now, the real question now is how are we going to react to the 200-day moving average? Now, let me show you the first case. This would be the bearish case. This We're going back to 2001, which was the dot-com situation. You can see here the initial drop. We had the retest, but then we hit that 200-day. Now, notice that the 200-day is in a really definite, definite downtrend, and every time the S&P 500 got up to that moving average, it, it was rejected, rejected rejected and, and bad things happened. So what we need to have here as we go back and look at where we are today, we really want to see the uh, index break on through the moving average and continue to trend higher. Let me show you an example of that. Now that would be, we're going to go back to the year uh, 2015, and you can see here we got the initial drop, we rallied up to the 200-day, then we got our retest, then we went ahead and broke on through the 200-day, and the 200-day moved up. It turned up. So we, once that 200-day gets into an uptrend, usually very good things happen. And after the election in 16 and uh, 17 was a very good year, and so that, that would be what we're looking for. Now, real quickly, we'll get into the uh, top five here. Again, we're seeing a, 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 a domination by software stocks. This is Alterex technology software stock hit an all-time new high here and the moving averages look very very constructive uh, here is a medical supply company now you'll notice here we have two of these having to do with diabetes this company makes a glucose monitor and you can see here recently uh, broke out a little pullback here but it looks like it's turning up. That's Dexcom. Now here's another company. Now they're in diabetic uh, healthcare as well. They're more involved in the, uh, the uh, pumps that deliver the insulin. So you have the meter that tells you you need the insulin. This company works side by side with uh, Dexcom on uh, uh, getting the insulin to the body. But you can see it's, it's, it's trying to form a cup here and it's, it's building a handle. Here's a stock that we own. I have to disclose that. This is Twilio. This is, again, software. Uh, uh, constructive pattern. Stock recently hit an all-time new high. Here's another software stock. You can see what I'm talking about. The softwares are dominating the list. All-time new high. Broke out nicely yesterday. So in conclusion, uh, it looks like the market is showing signs of improvement. And uh, Amy, you have any final thoughts? Um, I mean, we're heading into earnings season, so just be aware of that. So we would say to remain cautious, keep tight stop losses, but just keep your eyes open and stay optimistic. Thank you very much.